Welcome back to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. Easter is an appropriate day to screen today's film because it is a tale of resurrection. Not just the story, a crackerjack yarn starring Ann Sheridan and Dennis O'Keefe, but the backstory of the film itself, a nearly lost thriller from 1950 called Woman on the Run. Just how did this movie, superior to many more heralded noir films of its era, end up relegated to obscurity, literally dangling on the precipice of oblivion? The reasons reveal some dirty secrets about the commercial and critical factors that forge a film's reputation. The movie was independently produced by upstart Fidelity Pictures, which had none of the long-term protections afforded studio-financed films. It didn't make much money, essentially becoming an orphan once Fidelity's distribution deal with Universal ended. It was directed by a man with no critical cachet, a former actor holding zero credibility within the auteur school of cinema scholarship. If Woman on the Run had been directed by Raoul Walsh or Joseph H. Lewis or Don Siegel, it would have been rediscovered decades ago and heralded as a minor masterpiece. Then again, maybe not, because it is, at heart, a woman's picture, with aging pinup girl Anne Sheridan dominating all the advertising, some of which touted the film as a probing study of the failure of modern marriage, which certainly didn't help sell tickets. Woman on the Run was a true independent film, and the quest for independence and the desire to claim, or in Anne Sheridan's case, reclaim, top-tier status in Hollywood's tumultuous post-war environment was strong motivation for some of the film's collaborators. Producer Howard Welsh wanted to turn Fidelity Pictures into one of the industry's preeminent production houses. And Sheridan, who had bought her way out of a constricting contract at Warner Brothers, was determined at 35 to reestablish herself on her own terms as a still viable leading lady. And director Norman Foster had just returned from five years making films in Mexico, and he was determined to emerge from the shadow of his mentor, Orson Welles, to become a director of importance in Hollywood. Screenwriter Alan Campbell was also determined to escape a looming shadow, that of his celebrated wife, writer Dorothy Parker. They'd arrived in Hollywood from New York in the mid-30s and started right at the top, collaborating on the Oscar-nominated screenplay for the 1937 version of A Star is Born. By 1949, they had divorced, bitterly. Campbell hadn't had a screen credit since 1943's Forever and a Day, and had never worked as a sole screenwriter on any project. Woman on the Run was Campbell's opportunity to assert his independence from his more famous spouse and offer his own caustic commentary on the travails of matrimony. The film was based on a magazine story by Sylvia Tate titled Man on the Run. But aside from its basic premise, a witness to a gangland killing goes into hiding and the cops use his wife to track him down, the film steers its own course. Completely new is the character of newspaper man Danny Leggett, played with roguish style by Dennis O'Keefe, who according to production memos, wrote much of his own dialogue, as did Ann Sheridan. What did you have for breakfast? Cigarette and coffee? Cigarette. I thought so. Take us over to Lancey's on Powell. Lancey's? Okay. This place has the best waffles in town. Butter in every little square. Their off-the-cuff banter is sensational and shows the genuine wit and timing of these two wonderfully matched actors. The first draft was set in New Orleans, but when Welsh had cash problems, he moved the production to San Francisco which was just fine with cinematographer Hal Moore, an industry veteran since the silent days, who was finally getting a chance to shoot a feature in his hometown. And as a native San Franciscan, I can attest that this film perfectly captures the feel of the city when it was still a bustling but relatively small blue-collar seaport. I'm especially pleased to show Woman on the Run because it was through the efforts of my Film Noir Foundation that this movie was resurrected twice. First, when we extracted it from the Universal Vaults in 2003 after its copyright had expired. And then again, when that print, the only one known to exist in America, burned in a fire at the studio in June 2008. 
but our resolve to not let this film die paid off when we located a dupe negative at the British Film Institute and were able to finally complete the restoration with our colleagues at the UCLA Film and Television Archive. Like I said, this is a tale of resurrection. From 1950, here is Woman on the Run. <laughs>